to be able to evaluate this triple integral over the region B with respect to DV using spherical coordinates, we have to understand the differential operator DV. We know in rectangular coordinates, we can write that as DZ, DY, DX. In cylindrical coordinates, we know we can write that as DZ, R, DR, D theta. And in spherical coordinates, we have to figure out what we'll list it as. And like we did in cylindrical coordinates, I want to start by thinking about, well, what would we partition a region B into in space to set up the Riemann sum? What does a little spherical increment look like, right? Like we said in space, right, a delta X, a delta Y, and then add a delta Z, and we get a rectangular prism. In cylindrical coordinates, we got little cylindrical wedges, right? They look like little wedges that were bounded by two cylinders, uh, like two annular sections from polar coordinates, but lifted straight out of the board. And so I want to have the same conversation now about what this little spherical wedge would look like. And I've already kind of described it verbally there because I don't know what else to say. All right, so let's imagine we have a point in spherical space, right, plotted in spherical coordinates, and say it's right there. And let's say that's a rho phi theta. So that distance is rho. Phi is the angle I've rotated down from the z-axis, and then, excuse me, theta is an angle that's been rotated over in the plane to that point projected below. So let's think about what would happen if I incremented all of those things one by one. So let's imagine that I first increment rho by adding a little bit, a delta rho. Well, I'd go a little further out delta rho. All right, and so now, so that would be the point, rho delta rho phi theta, right? I haven't changed anything else. Now let's change the angle phi just a little bit. That means I would rotate down, right? And so this point would rotate down, and I'd get a little arced sector there, all right? So this was delta rho, and now I have an angle here, and that little angle in there is delta phi. And so now I see kind of this region bounded by one, two, three, four purple sides, and I want to swing it over by saying what happens if I say, well, theta plus delta theta. So now I increment this, which is a projection over by an angle delta theta. And so this purple region would swing over here and swing over here, and I'd end up with a spherical wedge, which I did a horrible job of drawing, and I knew I would do a horrible job of drawing because that's really hard, so I have this. A printout where I have a little spherical wedge where all the same things were done, right? You had that point, rho, and then add delta rho to it, and you come out here. You swing over in the phi direction. You go from here down to there, right? So you get this curvy bit there and then the delta theta and you run over there. And so we actually see all the things drawn out there kind of nicely. Well, now our job is to try to figure out the volume of that wedge or to describe the volume of that wedge. Like we did back in polar coordinates, what I'm gonna do is I'm going, going to actually pretend that that little wedge is a rectangular prism. I know it's not. I know there are curvy parts to it, but I'm going to pretend that it's a rectangular prism, which I'm doing a terrible job of drawing, but that'll work. Pretend that's a rectangular prism. Well, when I went from here to here, right, that was that delta rho. So if I'm thinking about volume as a length times a width times a height, well, I'm going to let that be 
the width, it doesn't really matter which one you let it be, but that would just be delta rho. And now I need to think about this curvy distance here. And I have some nice happy support lines in there. Well, those are parallel to the xy plane, so this angle in here is delta theta. That's what's going on there. And I recognize that distance. That's the distance r from cylindrical coordinates. And so if I think about that arc length, right, using the formula for arc length, it would be r times delta theta. Okay, well, I don't get to use an r here. I want to be in spherical coordinates. Well, fortunately, I know that r is equal to rho sine phi. And so I'm going to say that's this dimension of the box. And I'll put that in place of the length. Okay. And so one dimension left to go. So I have delta rho, I have this blue length of rho sine phi delta theta, and now I just need to know the last little bit. And so that's this distance down here, which in my placeholder rectangular prism is that one. Well, those distances coming from the origin have a delta phi in there, and that length is actually rho itself. So again, using the arc length formula, that would be that length rho times delta phi. And that's the height of my rectangular prism here. So rho delta phi. So altogether, this would be rho times rho would give me a rho squared sine phi. And I like the order delta rho, delta theta, excuse me, delta phi, delta theta. And that's what dv is equal to in spherical coordinates. dv is equal to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. As we were, would let n go to infinity in our Riemann sum, these spherical wedges would get smaller and smaller and look more and more like rectangular prisms. We can actually make that rigorous by applying the mean value theorem. In our next unit, when we learn how to do substitutions into multiple integrals, we can actually derive this formula for dv using that method. And so for now, we'll just accept this using this volume argument as the differential operator dv in spherical coordinates. And we'll add it to our list of relationships that we're allowed to use when converting in integrals. In our next video, we'll work an example.